First and four, a new legal fight. We're going to talk about what is next for the parents charged in the Oxford High School shooting. Also, Warren Mayor Jim Fouts has a warning for his critics. Jim Fouts is not going anywhere. I want you to send that message. What that means for the city's future, and here's Ron Hilliard. And we are looking at some rain showers moving our way, but I'll tell you when they arrive first at four. Conventional wisdom dictates that the official start of summer is the Memorial Day weekend. I say let's move it forward a couple of weeks to today, the official opening of the Monroe Street Midway. I'll show you around coming up first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, the first parents in America charged in a mass school shooting are looking to Michigan Supreme Court for help. Now we're talking about James and Jennifer Crumbly seen here at earlier court hearings. Good They're appealing lower court rulings that concluded there is enough evidence to send them to trial on involuntary manslaughter charges. The Crumblies are charged with four counts in the deaths of four students at the Oxford High School shooting back in November of 2021. They argue the decision to charge them was erroneous and could set a dangerous precedent. They argued the only person responsible for the deaths are their son, who's pleaded guilty to the murders and is waiting to be sentenced. Jennifer and James Crumbly remain behind bars as they wait to hear if their case will move forward. Warren's Mayor Jim Pavitz came out swinging today in a passionate defense of his record, his popularity and his anger over not being allowed to run for another term. Just yesterday, Michigan Supreme Court refused to take up his appeal of that decision. The Court of Appeals ruled Fouts is ineligible to run because of a term limits amendment to the city charter. Fouts argued the change passed in 2020 was not retroactive, which means he should be able to run again. The courts disagreed. Fouts says he's been good for the city and he'll use his influence to campaign for others who will do the same. I won't be mayor, that's all right. Jim Fouts is not going anywhere. I want you to send that message. I may no longer be mayor, but I'm going to, I'm going to continue to speak out for the citizens of Warren and for good, clean government, which has been solely missing. The mayor spoke for nearly 50 minutes before taking questions from reporters. Armara McDonald was there. She will have more on his plans for the future when you join us tonight at 5. Well, there is a big turnaround today for students and their families at Annapolis High School in Dearborn Heights. Principal Aaron Mullet is back on the job after a mysterious suspension that led to protests and petitions. Last night, the school board decided he is back on the job, although the principal still isn't talking about exactly what happened. Also, the board suspended Superintendent Tyrone Weeks, citing investigations into complaints regarding Title IX and civil rights. We're still following the story. We'll keep you posted as we learn more. In your first forecast, we're looking forward to a calm and a clear evening. Ron Hilliard is filling in for Kim Adams. Well, that's good news because I've got a softball game for my little girl I need to attend, Ron. Yes, we are looking at those temperatures looking very comfortable all throughout the afternoon. And Karen, what we're seeing out there right now is plenty of sunshine. And then we're going to start to see those temperatures tumbling just a little bit. But right now we're feeling very close to normal. We have all that sunshine out there right now. The temperatures are coming in in the mid 60s. Very nice out there. Finally seeing those temperatures dipping down into the 50s as we get overnight. But we are going to have those clear skies tonight. We're going to be having clear conditions tomorrow morning. And then we start to see a change happening. That change comes tomorrow afternoon. I'll tell you just what we're going to be seeing with that precipitation, how much and the best locations to possibly see it. That's all coming up. And of course, you can track that and get it on your forewarn forecast right on your forewarn app. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ron. We've got breaking news for millions of car owners from Hyundai and Kia. Reuters is reporting the Korean automaker has agreed to a class action settlement worth $200 million in a case over rampant car thefts. The companies are going to compensate owners who incurred theft-related losses or damages. We've been telling you about a security problem that has made certain Kia and Hyundai models a prime target for thieves. The settlement covers about 9 million U.S. owners. There's a delicate dance underway in Washington, D.C. as Democrats and Republicans look for a way to raise the country's debt ceiling. 
Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy sounds more optimistic, but there are potential problems on both sides that could really blow up negotiations. Kimberly Gill joins us now to talk a little bit about where things stand at this hour. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon to you. Both Democrats and Republicans agree no one wants the country to default on its bills. However, there are big questions about whether the leadership on both sides can keep everyone on the same page to make that happen in the next two weeks. Democrats have already conceded they'll need to talk about spending cuts in order to get Republican support. But when Republicans demand things like changes in work requirements for SNAP benefits, more progressive Democrats might not be on board with that. Meanwhile, Speaker McCarthy has to keep the more conservative wing of his party in line. Some conservatives are even trying to make border security part of the discussion, calling it a national crisis that needs attention now. For now, though, negotiations seem to be moving forward. We haven't agreed to anything yet, but I, I see the path that we could come to an agreement. And I, I think we have a structure now, and everybody's working hard. And I mean, we're working two or three times a day, then going back, getting more numbers. We can have a conversation about the budget, appropriations, spending, revenue, the investments that should be made to protect the health, the safety, and the economic well-being of the American people. Now, the president is in Japan for the G7 summit, but he's scheduled to come home Sunday to mm -hmm. oversee these talks and negotiations. He decided to shorten his trip about two days ago. But that deadline keeps getting closer and closer. You're exactly yeah. right. The deadline is two weeks from today on June mm -hmm. 1st. So if the government loses the ability to borrow money, it could affect Social Security pay payments, Medicaid, Medicare, military payments. A huge impact on the economy. And we'll have more coming up when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. All right, we appreciate it. Thank sure. you, Kim. Mm -hmm. Okay, and other stories we're covering for you today. A question, should social media platforms actually be held legally responsible for terrorists using their sites? At this point, the United States Supreme Court says no, but in one case, the high court ruled Twitter cannot be held liable for aiding and abetting terrorists when it hosted tweets created by the terror group ISIS. The court also dismissed a case against Google about content moderation. It refused to narrow the protection sites under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. The rulings are being called a big win for Silicon Valley. In spite of the chill in the air, summer tradition just returned to downtown Detroit in the past two hours. Take a look at all of this. The bright colors makes you happy, right? We're talking about family fun over at the Monroe Street Midway, from skating to shooting hoops to works of art. Local force Tim Pamplin took Drone 4 along for the ride to show us what you'll be missing if you don't give it a try. Well, good afternoon from Cadillac Square. Campus Marsh is in front of us from Drone 4. We recognize that with a fountain and the ice skating rink would be on the right there. If we could have Drone 4 pan right, Come on, Drone 4, pan right, a little quicker. There you go. That is the Monroe Street Midway. A riot of color, energy, and excitement. And look at this. Members from the local 25 still workers playing a little hooky. No, we're on our lunch break. <laughs> yep. We uh, came to shoot hoops. Get some lunch. Seen it was open today, stopped in, shot a couple hoops. I think it's a, a great environment for the city. It shows that uh, you can bring a lot of people down together. Diversity, um, have a good time without violence, and uh, this is what Detroit's about. If security is an issue for you, well, understand there are metal detectors at each of the entrances, and during my visit today, police officers were everywhere. And this really is an oasis in downtown Detroit. It's rather refreshing to see a vacant lot that's not been turned into a parking lot. That's for sure. For so many years, this was just that. Today, Justin was entertaining a group from the Baltimore mayor's office, showing them what downtown Detroit looks like. Sometimes downtown doesn't feel accessible to everyone, and we really want to change that perspective. So starting next week, uh, we'll be providing two buses every day to a different school or after school program to bring up to 50 kids on each bus to come and enjoy this. Everything complimentary. Play, whether it's basketball, pickleball, we'll have Connect Four games and our new putt-putt that came last year. So it was a truly wonderful afternoon, a great opening day for the Monroe Street Midway. There is the putt-putt golf, conveniently located under the massive Rocket Mortgage Golf Classic sign. So back out here to Drone 4. The Midway is free to enter. Everything is free apart from the roller skating, skate rental. There is a slight fee for that. That's for scene. Downtown Detroit, Tim Pamplin, Local 4. Uh, so much fun. Thanks, Tim. By the way, there are all kinds of special events through the summer, including Fitness Fridays and Silent Disco Saturdays. Well, a full list of events. We did post a link for you. You can find it on clickondetroit.com. The Midway is open through Labor Day weekend.